Hey, what's up guys, Theo here. In this video, we're gonna look at building a recursive function to determine is a word a palindrome. So it's gonna be called is palindrome. And a palindrome is a word that is the same um, backwards as it is in normal form. So a simple example would be Bob. It's the same backwards as it is forwards. And another example would be race car. If we look at when we go backwards, we get race car. So uh, I'm not going to go over the iterative approach, but I just learned how to do a recursive version of it. So let's go ahead and build this out. So we're going to call function is palindrome. And it's going to just take in a word. We're not going to work with a sentence. We're just going to work with a word right now for a single string. We're going to assume uh, there's no spaces or anything. So this has two base cases, right? So the first base case is um, if word.length is equal to zero or word.length is equal to one, right? Then at this point, we can go ahead and return true because that in itself is a palindrome. Sounds kind of silly, but that's what we need as a base case. Uh, the next condition, the next base case here, let me get rid of that. The next base case that we need is um, to determine if it's not a palindrome. So this will be if word of zero, if the first index is not equal to word of word.length minus one, which is the last index, let's go ahead and return false. And then, now let's look at the recursion. So first of all, I'm gonna log out what the word is word is plus word. So here's where our recursion comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to return. Um, remember, we always need to call return because it's going to trigger off another function invocation. If we don't have return, then we're just going to call it, but we're not storing anything in the stack. So uh, what we want to call now is we want to call is palindrome, right? But in order to break out of these conditions and eventually hit true or, or false, whatever it is, uh, we need to call it with word dot substring and so assuming that we've reached this point down here what we've done is we've said this first the first letter and the last letter are equal so therefore we can ignore these and we can keep shortening the string and keep looking through it to determine if these first and last letters are equal to each other and then eventually when we get down to one we will have uh, ascertained that this is or this is not a palindrome if we make it that far. So to do that, we're going to get the substring and we're going to start with one. So we're going off of um, of the second letter and we want to go all the way up to word dot length minus two. So say our word is race, race car, right? First time through, we've gone through it and we've determined that R and R equal. So now we have ace, ace ka right? Uh, so now that's what we want to pass into is palindrome. So let's go ahead and try this out. And this is pretty neat compared to the iterative approach. So we're just going to say is palindrome. I'm going to say race car. So let's look at what we're actually getting here. So we're getting race car. That's the first time. And like I said, we're getting ace right? And we'll cut off the two A's. Then we'll get ses equal and then we can cut off that, and then we'll get down to our base case here, where it's equal to zero or one, right? And if that if that's the case, then we know it's a palindrome. So hopefully you guys enjoy this, and let me just do this with an example right here of, um, can do is palindrome of Theo, right, my name, and we can look at um, what happens here. So we have Theo, right? Um, and when we get false right away, right? Because T is not equal to O. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the, in the next video. Take care.